Turn with me to Genesis chapter 8. We're going to be reading verse 1 to 19. Let us read. The Bible says, Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of heaven were also stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters receded continually from the earth. At the end of the 150 days, the waters decreased. Then the ark rested in the seventh month, the 17th day of the month on the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Then he sent out a raven which kept going on to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. He also sent out for himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of the fold of her foot and she turned into the ark to him for the waters were on the face of the whole earth so he put out his hand and took her and drew her into the ark to himself and he waited yet seven days again he sent the dove out from the ark then the dove came to him in the evening and behold a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth and no one knew that the waters had receded from the earth so he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove which did not return again to him anymore and it came to pass in the six hundred and first year in the first month the first day of the month that the waters were dried up from the earth and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked and indeed the surface of the ground was dry and in the second month on the 27th day of the month the earth was dried go out of the ark you he told Noah and his wife and your sons and your daughters bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you birds the cattle every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so that they may bound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons were with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird and whatever creeps on the earth according to their families went out of the ark. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I want to speak to us this morning on the subject, the God who remembers. And why, when Bishop asked me to preach today, he asked me on Wednesday to speak. And I thought, what am I going to speak about? And as I was praying, God spoke to me to talk about the God who remembers because I counsel so many people and a lot of people, sometimes because of what they are going through, they sometimes feel that God has forgotten them and yet God has not forgotten them. God has not forgotten them. So I want to tell you that I want to speak to you on the God who remembers. And many of you are here feeling that God has forgotten you. Have you ever been in a situation where you feel that God has forgotten you because of the situation that you're going through? You're thinking, does he even know? Does he even hear? Does he even know what I'm going through? God knows what you're going through. He's a God who remembers. You're probably thinking, does he even know that I am praying? And sometimes you're praying so much and you're feeling that God has forgotten you because you have been praying for so many years and you don't have an answer yet and you're thinking, oh, God has forgotten me. If so, Genesis chapter 8 is for you this morning. I came to tell you that to remember in regard to God does not mean that you do not exist in his mind anymore. God has not forgotten you, my brother, my sister. God has not forgotten you or even forsaken you. He hasn't forgotten you. Just say, God has not forgotten me. Do you really believe? It's only a few of you. Say, God has not forgotten me. He hasn't forgotten you. So whatever you're waiting upon God for, just know that he's a God who remembers and he has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. What it actually means, because sometimes you feel God has forgotten you because you have been praying, you have been waiting, you have been serving God and you're wondering why has he forgotten me? Sometimes what happens is that he suspends some things in your life because he's waiting for that appointed time, either for you to mature and to grow up enough or even sometimes to overcome moral failures in your life, God is always waiting for an appointed time for you so that he can do something in your life when you are ready. So maybe God is waiting for something in your life to go over, for you to overcome, so that when the time has come, he will do for you 
what he has planned for you. He has got good plans for you, he hasn't forgotten you. Maybe he's waiting for you to mature even before he can bless you, you know, with finances and so on, because sometimes you're not ready for what God wants to do in your life. It doesn't mean that because he hasn't answered you that he's not working. God is still working. He's still working because he's a God who remembers. He doesn't stop working. God is always working. And whatever you're going through, I want you to know that God is still working in your life. So I want us to look at some people in the Bible that God remembered. And the first person that we've read about is Noah. He was told to build an ark, and then he went into the ark, and then there was a flood that came, and then after that, when the floods dried out, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that we've just read, then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters subsided. That's what the Bible says. The phrase that God remembered Noah does not mean that God had forsaken him. It doesn't mean that God had even forgotten him. It just says that God remembered Noah, meaning that God turned towards him because it was his time. Because during the time of his waiting, God was trying to cleanse the earth and also to cleanse you know, the world of sin and mockers. So God was still working on the situation. At, at, at the time the floods were there, God was still working on the situation. So whatever you're going through, I want you to know that God is still working on that situation. Noah was in the ark and God was still working on that situation. God remembered Noah while he was still in the ark. And God is remembering you while you're still in that situation. He's still working. He's still working on that situation. So don't feel that God is not working. He is working. And that is what he did. He was still working on the situation so that when it was time for Noah to come out, he would tell Noah to come out. And when it was the time for Noah to come out, he told Noah to come out. He was working on the situation. And so I want you to know when Noah came out of the, uh, of the ark, he came to an earth that was full of everything that he needed. There was no more floods. It was a new environment. You know, he had a bigger space than where he was cramped up in the ark. And he, even now, the whole world belonged to him. Imagine the whole world belonged to him when he came out of the ark. So whatever you're going through, God is preparing something great for you. You have to learn to wait upon God because he's preparing something great for you because he's a God who remembers. And it is when God remembers you that something great will come into your life. He will do something new in your life. So whatever you're going through, and I've been a Christian for some time, and I have seen that sometimes when you are praying and you're waiting upon God and you're wondering so much, when God answers and he comes through, let me tell you, you thank God that God has come through for you in a very great way and that is what he did for Noah. He did something very great for him. He came into a place where it was in a new beginning. There were no people to compete with him. There were no mockers. There were so many mockers at that time mocking him but he came to a place where now all the mockers had been dealt with and now he was able to own the whole entire world because he was an evangelist and we want to thank God that even if you're a child of God, whatever you're going through, God is preparing something great for you. If you believe it, say amen. Say, I believe. Do you really believe? He's going to do something. So don't give up. Don't give up. Just continue to wait upon God. Continue to trust in God. Continue to wait upon God because today I came to tell you that he's a God who remembers you. He has not forgotten you. And I know that this word is for somebody. It may not be for everybody, but I want to tell you that God has not forsaken you. But sometimes we want to go through shortcuts, you know. You want to go through shortcuts when you're waiting upon God for a job and you haven't gotten the job. Maybe you want to bribe people or to sleep with somebody to get a job. But anytime you get into shortcuts, you mess up your life. It is important for you to wait upon God. Wait upon God. Don't get to a place where you want to go through shortcuts. I want you to believe that God is able to come through for you because he's a God who remembers. And when God remembered Noah, the Bible says that everybody who was connected to him found liberty. They came out of the ark. Even his family, everybody came out of the ark. When God remembers you, anybody who is connected to you, I'm telling you they will be blessed because God has remembered you. Amen. As you're connected to people who God is remembering and as God blesses them, also you will be blessed. And I have experienced that in my life. You will also be blessed 
in Jesus name just say I will be blessed I'm still in my introduction everybody connected to you will receive a blessing as God remembers you I'm still in my introduction now the Bible says that we just read that Noah entered the ark when he was 600 years old that's what we just read 600 years old two months and two days and seven days later the rain started and then it rained for 40 days and 40 nights that's what the Bible says and then he left the ark when he was 601 years old two months and 27 days which means that he stayed in the ark for one whole year you can imagine just being floating in an ocean in an ark a limited place you're so cramped up for a whole year wondering what is happening but because he was connected to God he continued waiting upon God so you need to continue waiting upon God don't just give up because God is still doing something in your life he stayed there for one year and it was very very difficult he was very difficult for him because there was nothing that he could do there was no luxury and sometimes you're in a place where you're so cramped up maybe you're looking for a job and because you're looking for a job you don't know what to do you're staying with relatives or friends and you don't even have any space of your own you're so cramped up you can't do anything you can't go out because you don't have money but let me tell you god is going to come through for you but because when it was time for uh noah's timing to come out of the ark god remembered him and god is coming through for you his time is coming for you just like he did for Noah he's going to come through for you and sometimes waiting upon God is not so easy but I want to encourage you to continue waiting upon God not even knowing when your breakthrough is coming it becomes so difficult waiting upon God you don't even know when God is going to answer but I want you to know that there is an appointed time and God is going to come through for you that was the story of Noah but a time came when God remembered him. God has not forgotten you. I want to keep on repeating that, that God has not forgotten you because I know that a lot of you are going through some situations and you're wondering, maybe God has forgotten me. He hasn't forgotten you. In Psalm 42 verse 9 to 10, the psalmist just came to a place where he felt that God had forgotten him. And sometimes we get to that place where we actually believe that God has forgotten us. In Psalm 42 verse 9 to 10, the Bible says that the psalmist asked God, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with the breaking of the bones, my enemies reproach me. What they say to me all day long, where is your God? Sometimes you're wondering, I'm serving God. I go to church every Sunday. I go to prayer. I go to come. I go to morning glory. And people are just wondering, where is your God? Sometimes we go through that when our situations are so prolonged. You start asking God, why have you forgotten me? But God has not forgotten you. So number one, how did God remember Noah? If you're taking notes, number one, how did God remember Noah? That was my introduction. Number one, how did God remember Noah? The first thing is, when God remembered Noah, he commanded the wind to blow upon the earth to dry up the waters. And that means that God is in control of nature. He commanded the wind. God is in control of nature. And that is why Jesus Christ was able to walk on water and not even sink. He was in the boat one time with the disciples. He was with the disciples in the boat one time. There was a storm. And he was able to speak to the storm and said, peace be still. And the storm became still. So God is in control of nature. And that is under his power. We don't have to worry. Sometimes when we've been going through a situation in this country where the rains have been there, a lot of rains have been there. And then we've had floods. The rains have provided food for us. But also the floods have caused some people to die and destroyed some people's lives. But I want you to know that... God is in control of nature because as we have been praying, God has commanded those floods to stop and you can see that the floods have stopped. Let's appreciate God because the floods have stopped. A lot of people have died and a lot of people have been destroyed, but God has commanded the floods to stop and that is why when God commanded the wind, you know, to flow upon the face of the earth, what happened is that the waters dried up. God is able to speak to the anything that he wants to speak to and it will happen in Jesus name so don't worry God is able to speak to anything he's in control of nature and God is able to command anything to be able to protect you in Jesus name so I want us to begin to believe that there's nothing that God is not in control of 
He's in control of everything. He's not just in control of human beings, he's in control of anything. Number two, how did God remember Noah? He gave Noah a sign, if you're taking notes. He gave Noah a sign. When God remembers you, he will give you a sign. A sign where you ought to go, where you should do, whatever God wants to do in your life, he will definitely give you a sign Whatever you're going through, God is going to give you a sign. That's what I'm telling you. He's going to give you a sign. And that is why when he sent the dove the last time, when that dove went out of the ark, the dove came back with an olive leaf. And then when that dove came back with an olive leaf, Noah was able to see that the floods had come to an end. God gave him a sign and God will always give you a sign to direct you where you should go. He will always give you a sign. When he remembers you, he will always give you a sign. I pray that God will give somebody a sign after this message. And maybe God has given you a sign and you're not believing. When God gives you a sign, know that your breakthrough is about to come. Your breakthrough is about to come and may God give you a sign. Also in the book of Kings, the story of Elijah when he was praying for the rain and believing God for the rain to come, he kept on praying and he kept on sending out his servant. He kept on sending out his servant to check and see if the rains were about to come. And every time the servant went out, he couldn't see any sign that the rains were going to come. And then one day when the servant went out, he came back and he told Elijah, I have seen a cloud the size of a hand. And when he told Elijah that, let me tell you, Elijah continued praying. He continued praying until it rained because he knew that the breakthrough has come. God will always give you a sign that your breakthrough has come. And when he gives you that sign, you need to continue praying, knowing that your breakthrough has come and believe that as you have believed in him, your breakthrough has come. May God give you a sign, even maybe this week, that your breakthrough is coming. I know I'm speaking to somebody who's been waiting. May God give you a sign that his breakthrough has come and he will do that. He will give you a sign that he has remembered you. He'll give you a sign that he has remembered you and that is what Noah saw. May God give you a sign that he has not forgotten you in Jesus' name. And then number three, when God remembered Noah, he spoke to him to get out of the ark. Noah did not even know when he was going to get out of the ark. Even when he sent the dove, he did not know, is it time for me to come out? But when it was time for him to come out, God spoke to him. So when God remembers you, he will speak to you. He will speak to you. And let me tell you something. The only way that God will speak to you is when you read his word, you study his word, you fellowship with him. God will never speak to you when you don't read the Bible, when you don't seek him. The only way that God can speak to you is when you fellowship with him, when you read the word of God. When God remembers you, he will speak to you. He will give you a word. He will talk to you. He will speak to you. And the only way I said he can speak to you is when you fellowship with him, is when you study his word. Is that when you study his word? When you don't study his heart, when you don't seek him, let me tell you, he will not speak to you. Because how will God speak to you? How does somebody speak to you if you don't talk to them? They will not speak to you if you don't talk to them. So I want to encourage you to keep reading the word of God and just keep seeking God even for his will. I want to give you a testimony that... When I gave my life to Christ, there was a black American lady in the church who led me to Christ when we were at Nairobi Pentecostal Church. And she told me, I want to help you to know how to read the word of God. And she introduced me to Every Day with Jesus devotionals. And up to this day, I still get these books and I donate them. I donate them to ladies that I'm working with, they know that and they always come to the office to collect. This is the May and June issue, and then when the July and August one comes, they always come to the office because I always tell them that this is what helped me, and so I always donate these books to people to read, the devotionals for people to read, because I want to give you a testimony. When she gave me that book, one time we were dating with Bishop before I got married, we were dating and he was attracted towards me and I was attracted to him. And then I was believing God uh, for a good husband, but I didn't think maybe this is the one because of being fearful. We were dating. He loved me and I also loved him. He used to come home every Sunday and Saturday with guys from the church 
to come and visit me and because I loved me him I was also happy that he was coming to visit me but I didn't think about marriage at that time and one day and you know even at that time I didn't think about marriage because he was in the worship team and there were so many ladies in the worship team who were after him so I was a bit fearful even at that time do I really need to be a pastor's wife because one time he came and he told me God had spoken to him that I should be his wife and I thought hey I said to him, okay, can you give me time to pray so that God can also speak to me? And he said, what do you mean? If God has spoken to me, don't believe me. I told him, it's not that I don't believe in you. It's because he didn't know that I was fearful. I was so fearful because I measured myself according to the standards of the world. Because I thought a pastor's wife should know how to play the keyboard. A pastor's wife should not should not be able to just sit down, should be able to lead praise and worship. <laughs> so I was, you know, measuring myself according to the standards of the world. And so I was so fearful. And that is why I said, please, let God speak to me. And I kept on reading the every day with Jesus. And then one time when we went to the Christian camp, which we used to go to every year, we went to Kanamai in Mombasa. I took my notebook and I was still reading the word of God because I didn't know how to read the word of God. I was still a new Christian. And I kept on reading and reading. And the last night we were there, God spoke to me through Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. And he said, trust in me, lean not on your own understanding. Because me, I had my own understanding that a pastor's wife should know how to, you know, play the keyboard and also to lead praise and worship because that's what I was thinking. So I was so fearful. And so when God spoke to me that night, I wondered and I thought, okay, God is singly not on your own understanding. And then we went, you know, for the Kesha on that last night where we were at the camp. And there were other pastors also who came into that hall to also minister to us through prayer. And then our, the late Dr. Tokumbo Adiemo was our mentor, said, now that we are closing, we have come through the end of the Kesha, it was 2 a.m., he said, go to somebody and hold their hand and pray with them. And there was a lady prophet who came to where I was, and we started praying. And then she said, what's your name? I said, Ronica. And she said, you have been praying to God, and God is saying, trust in him. You are leaning on your own understanding. You are fearful about something. And then I was like, eh, how does she know that God has spoken to me like this? But you see, it was just a confirmation. If I was not seeking God... If I was not reading the word of God, I would have wondered, what is this woman saying? What kind of a prophet is this? But God had already spoken to me. And because God had already spoken to me, I now had to surrender to God. And then when we finished the Kesha, when we were getting into the bus to come back to Nairobi in the morning, I wrote a little note to Bishop, and I told him, God has spoken to me. And he said, hey, so you didn't trust me? I said, no, I was fearful. And so I'm here today because God spoke to me and I obeyed God. I didn't refuse to obey God, I obeyed God, so I'm here today because I obeyed God and God spoke to me. And many times we are looking for people to talk to us, we're not seeking God. When you seek God, God will speak to you. God will never refuse to speak to you when you don't seek him. And because I was seeking God, he spoke to me. So I want to encourage you to continue seeking God because God is a God who speaks and he will speak to you. So when God remembers you, he will speak to you. He spoke to me and even after that, I had so many confirmations of that, that God had spoken to me. There were so many, because I was so fearful, I could tell you so many things, but I can only tell the king's daughters. I'm telling God had so many confirmations for me because I was a fearful person. Sometimes God speaks to you to do something and you're still fearful, you know what I mean? I'm still thinking, can I be a pastor's wife? And today I'm a bishop's wife. I want to thank God for speaking to me because if you hadn't spoken to me, I wouldn't be here today. I obeyed God and I thank God that he spoke to me. And also, God wants you to listen to his servants when they're bringing the word of God to you and to apply it in your life because God will also speak to you through his servants because sometimes some of you don't even take notes, you don't even buy CDs, you don't even go back home and go through your notes. That is also what our pastor taught us to do, that as you take notes, that you take a CD, make sure you go through the notes. You need to also, you know, take God's word from your servants, receive it, and go and apply it in your life because God will speak to you through his word. Amen. God will speak to you through his word. Now, because I'm a king's daughter, 
I want to say something about two women in the Bible who God remembered. I cannot finish speaking before I speak about women. King's daughters, I'm also here to speak to you. I want to speak to us and say something about two women that God remembered in the Bible. And all the women God remembered in the Bible, it was about giving birth. If you read, it's about giving birth. There was Sarah in Genesis chapter 21. Please put it on the screen. There was Sarah in Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 to 2. There was Sarah in Genesis 20, 21, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. At the set time at which God has spoken to him. When God remembers you, whatever he says he will do, he will do. He fulfills his promises. So if God has spoken to you, he will do what he said he will do. When God remembers you, just know he will fulfill his promises. Because God is not a man that he should lie. He will do whatever he says he will do. Even whatever he says he will do in his word, he will do it because he's not a man that he should lie. When he remembers you, your barren womb or business or life, let me tell you, will be fertile again in Jesus' name. When God remembers you, he will fulfill his promise. And whatever he has said to you, maybe through a prophet or maybe your pastor, whatever he has said even through his word, he will do it because he fulfills his promises. And then when Sarah gave birth, she said in verse 6, God has made me laugh and all who hear will laugh with me. Who would have thought I would breastfeed? At my age, imagine she was wondering, and she said, God will make me laugh. When God remembers you, there will be rejoicing, and people will also rejoice with you, and you will laugh if you're here and you're crying. Let me tell you, when you're weeping, weeping and yours for the night, and joy comes in the morning, joy is coming, and God is going to make you laugh. Somebody say, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh. And if you're childless, you're here, and you're childless, king's daughter, I prophesy that your barrenness has come to an end. I prophesy from this pulpit that your barrenness has come to an end in Jesus' name. So joy is coming, praise be to God. Another woman that God remembered in the Bible in giving birth is in Genesis chapter 30, verse 22 to 24. Genesis chapter 30, verse 22 to 24 was Rachel. Another woman that God remembered in giving birth was Rachel. Genesis chapter 30 verse 22 to 23. God remembered Rachel and God listened to her and opened her womb. It says God listened to her. What does that mean? She was praying. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. When God remembers you, he responds to your prayers. Rachel kept on praying. So keep on praying because he will respond to your prayers. I don't know how many of you don't pray, but when you pray, I want to encourage you that God will respond to your prayers. He will answer you because he himself said, call unto me and I will answer you. He will answer you. He will respond to your prayers. Keep on coming to morning glory to pray. Keep on coming to the prayer boot camp. Even when you're at home, keep on praying because God himself says, I will answer you. He will make it happen because he's a God who answers prayer and he will answer you. Now in our text, you might be saying, Mom, Noah, the Bible does not say that he prayed. He was a man in action. <laughs> in our text, you're not told that Noah was praying. But you know what? It required the fullness of God's timing. So I want to encourage you to wait upon God's appointed time. There's always God's appointed time. So wait upon God's appointed time because there is the fullness of his time and there is an appointed time of God. God has not forgotten you. Now before I conclude my last points, I want to let you watch a recap of what Noah went through. For three minutes, I want you to watch a recap. Before I give you my last point, I want us to watch a recap for three minutes of what Noah went through. Because maybe you're wondering what his mom is saying. It's in the Bible, but it's in a recap that I would like us to watch. Your floods are going to dry up. Your floods are going to dry out if you believe the word of God today, that God is going to remember you and he has not forgotten you. Now my last point, finally, back to the text. When God remembered Noah, let's go back to Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Please put it on the screen. Genesis chapter 8, verse 20. Now when God remembered Noah, 
the Bible says that Noah also remembered God. In verse 20, the Bible says that Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. He raised an altar and a sacrifice to God, an altar of thanksgiving. Now many people, God remembers them. And then it is just that, it's just it. They don't even give a sacrifice of thanksgiving or even thank God for what he has done in their lives. They don't even offer. And here we see that Noah raised an altar of thanksgiving. It was after the flood that Noah raised the altar because he realized that he would have perished, but because of God, he did not perish. And therefore, that's why he thought of raising an altar because he realized that God in his mercy had delivered him and even saved him and his family and he thought, let me raise an altar of thanksgiving to God. It was a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And so, so we should always be grateful and also always be having thankful hearts because of what God has done for us. And many times we don't even raise altars of thanksgiving to thank God for what he has done for us. And this is what Noah did because he would have perished and he decided, wow, let me just raise an altar of thanksgiving to God. This is what Noah did. Now the greatest sin that will send people to hell will be when you refuse to even thank God, you know, for what he did for you through Jesus Christ, even to thank him for the cross. And that is why I want to tell you that we have Holy Communion, you know, every month, one Sunday we have Holy Communion because we come to remember what God has done for us, not remember what God has done for him. And that is why we have Holy Communion, to remember what God has done for us and everything that he has done for us. And so whenever you come here for Holy Communion, it is a time to remember God for what he has done for you, the God who saved you, the God who loves you, the God where he has brought you, you are knowing that it is him who brought me where I am. It is so important for us to always remember what God has done for us. Even in the situation that you are in, whatever anguish you are going through, you need to remember the God who is with you. He is with you in that situation because he said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Now let me say this. I hope you will understand this. It's not every altar that can speak to your life. It's not every altar that can speak to your life. And so it is important for you to know the altar where you worship, the altar where you worship. You can visit an altar, okay? You see, you have to know the altar where you worship because people these days are just going all over the place, all over the place, but you have to know the altar where you worship. You can visit an altar somewhere, but you have to own an altar. An altar where God's history for your life is an altar where all your tears are, that is the altar that is connected to you. Because the altars you visit, they can never give you a permanent change in your life. They can never give you a permanent change in your life. You can visit them, okay? But God will remember you at your altar, not the altar that you visit. When God remembers you, let me tell you, he will remember you at your altar. And which is your altar? House of Grace, this is your altar. This is your altar. This is your altar. So I hope you know that this is your altar. If you know this is your altar, why don't you do your hand like this? This is your altar. This is your altar. This is your altar. It's not an altar that you're visiting. This is your altar. And so I want to challenge you today to empower your altar. Sometimes the altars are silent because we don't empower them. Sometimes altars are silent because we don't empower them with our sacrifices. And if you want your altar to speak to you, you have to empower your altar. You have to empower your altar because sometimes the altars are silent. And that's why sometimes when we tell you about sacrificing, it is because you're empowering your altar because it is your altar that will speak to you. If you have been wondering what is this happening in my life, I want to tell you, that you can raise a seed. Whatever pain you're going through, you can raise a seed of sacrifice for that pain because you're doing it because you know that God will remember you and that is why you do it. Let's rise up on our feet for a minute. Let's rise up on our feet.